Hey guys, today I am hoping to swap out this little 4 inch radio unit for an upgraded 8 inch one without paying $1500 for Ford to do it for me. I found that you could buy an 8 inch screen off a 2018 or newer Ford EcoSport and it fits exactly in this spot. Then you get some firmware off a site called Cyan Labs, put it on a USB and it should update it. And I will walk you through the process. I've never done this before, so hopefully all goes well. All right, so I did a lot of research online and I went to a site, a couple of different um, kind of junkyard sites. I think it was called autoparts.ca and it looks up a database, database across all of Canada at junkyards. Um, and you can just type in the part that you need. So I searched, and I'll show you on this on the screen, but I searched for a 2018 or newer Ford EcoSport 8 inch screen and audio controls. It was uh, $300 including shipping. So we have the 8 inch screen, and then this is why it's really important you get the controls, because most people sell them, that I found most of the sellers actually sell them as separate units. So there are the audio controls. Before I get started, you might wonder, can you do this in your 2024 Transit? It depends whether your van has SYNC or SYNC 3 versus just the base model. So to use this 8 inch screen, we need it to have SYNC already on the van. The easiest way to check this is to go into the settings menu on the head unit, scroll down to general, and then go to about SYNC and you'll see the version. If you have SYNC 3, you're good to go. First step, it's coming around the back here. I just wedged the screwdriver right behind there and just turned it a little bit, really being careful. I don't have a small enough spudger to get in there. I just did one more spot in the center here and then it popped it right off. And these are seven millimeter screws right here. Yeah, so you just lift up and out. And we got two cables here. I'll pull the little clip. That goes in the audio controls. It's a tricky little pin on the side there, but and then you just ah, uh, got it. All right, this one's off. So now I just need to pop these screws off and mount the other audio controls with the other unit. I need to put these two pieces together. So I'll just grab the screws off of this. Uh, we got our screen, 8 inch screen and audio controls and our two attachment points. Let's see if we can put it back in. So unfortunately I didn't realize that on the new screen you lose the controls and you aren't able to access the settings menu. So I went back and I popped the old screen back in so I can get the information that I need. If you're wherever you are, go to settings, go down to general and then go down to about sync and there's the information you need to take a photo of that now you can pop this off put your new one in and then we'll do the software portion you want to go to cyanlabs.net to download the free sin 3 updater um, then go ahead and hit the download install link and then click ok to save the file once you've downloaded and installed the software you want to go ahead and format the USB it should have at least 8 gigabytes of storage then go ahead and select your region and then you want your version to match the version you found previously on your old sync unit. Then go ahead and choose your map version, which in my case is the non-nav APIM. Next, you want to say yes, you agree to formatting the entire USB. So if you have anything else there, you will lose it. And then it takes about 15 minutes to format. So the USB has been formatted and is ready. The instructions say just to turn the vehicle or the ignition on, have the radio on, and insert the USB. So here we go. Nice. Updating system software, which is what we want to see. And now we just wait. I'll update you guys on how long it takes. Okay, a little message just popped up saying it's now restarting the system. It has been about 10 minutes. <sighs> the big moment. So the screen did this restart, uh, restarted by itself, and now it's just black. It's a little bit nerve-wracking because 
when you're doing the reformatting on the computer, the program keeps saying if you put in anything wrong, it might brick your APIM. I don't want that, so I'm still optimistic, but I don't love just looking at the black screen. No go still, but I hope I found a solution. Supposedly if you hold power and the skip, it's supposed to work. And this is to reset the A pin. Oh. Reset it. Come on. Oh, your there we have it, folks. Unreal. Touch screen is working. Apps. Oh, nice. So as one last example, I just want to show you that the reverse camera and everything is now working with the new screen. Watch for dog. Looks good. And we haven't disabled the beeper yet. Soon. Um, yeah. So the lines, everything's great on the screen. You can see that. The last thing I want to show you is that Apple CarPlay works. So just plug my phone in and pops up right away. pops up right away and you can see we are northeast of Vancouver um, you put in de your destination anything you want all your apps work I'm very happy with it I think well worth the 300 Canadian dollars and I've seen people online get them for even like 70 80 bucks US if you can find a junkyard nearby that has one available so again a 2018 or newer 8 inch screen out of a Ford EcoSport I believe it works with 2019 or newer transits this is Tim from the future. I'm here in a 2023 Ford Transit now. I had to re-upload the video due to a copyright claim from a company that sells those screens for roughly $2,000. But I wanted to take the chance to show you the new 12-inch screen in the Ford Transits. It's a beautiful screen that you can order from the factory. However, you lose your HVAC controls on the dash. And I know this is really important to some people, so I want to point it out here. As far as I know, this mod still works with 2023 Transits. I've heard of people ordering these vans with just the 4-inch screen so that they get HVAC controls on the dash, and then they can go ahead and upgrade to the 8-inch screen like I showed in this video. Bottom line is, approach this at your own risk. Um, there is a risk of breaking your APIM if the software update doesn't go well, but um, to me it's well worth the $300 risk and I'm really happy with it. So if you found this video helpful, please hit that like button, subscribe to the channel, and there will be more videos about our van build coming soon. Thanks for watching.